What's going on everybody? Doc from Average Gamer guys. Back yet again. More Halo Wars 2 action. More Sergeant Johnson DLC hype. So I'm doing two part video series. Not sure which video you're watching first. But essentially I'm going through. I'm taking a look based off of the live stream the, the other day uh, that Sketch ran. Um, and I'm going to take a look at both multiplayer as well as the Blitz cards. This video is going to be Blitz specific focused. So if you're more interested in multiplayer go and check our other video out. They'll both be up at the same time. Um, and I'm essentially just gonna do this. I'm gonna roll through the Blitz cards, give you a little bit longer look at them, talk about them a little bit uh, each, and then after that, I'm just gonna talk about my initial impressions, initial thoughts, uh, and some initial strategies moving forward once the DLC does drop, uh, based on what we are able to see in the stream and a few other things. Um, so we're gonna jump right into it with the Blitz card. So jumping right in, we're going to do leader powers first and then units after that. First one, probably one of the bigger ones and one of the more impactful ones, and I'll talk about why this. I think this here in a second, is going to be bunker drop. At 40 energy, you're essentially getting a bunker drop that you can drop in at any location, which allows you to uh, garrison in infantry, four infantry units in blitz, comes with three shield, and quite a bit of additional health actually so it'll be interesting to see and I'll give some of my other thoughts here uh, in just a minute as we roll through this second leader power we're getting is mech overcharge um, this is going to give you a brief speed up to all friendly mechs and it's also going to make them invulnerable um, from the live stream that we saw the other day where they were playing blitz firefight I would say we get anywhere between five to ten seconds of invulnerability from this pretty decent AOE um, so I think this can actually be a pretty good uh, leader power to be really honest uh, and at 90 energy it seems like it can definitely save some units for sure um, so we get a siege turret which is really interesting and I think really awesome at 100 energy um, allowing you to essentially just deploy a temporary long-range siege turret now temporary uh, is kind of a relative term for blitz uh, I would say that this stays in for close to two minutes um, so it's a pretty long timer on this, uh, and, and it's quite a good uh, leader power here. And then finally for leader powers, we have the EMP Mac Blast. This blasts an area uh, which does damage and also briefly, briefly stuns uh, both enemy vehicles and aircraft. Coming in at 110 uh, energy, pretty good overall. I, I do think that the damage is going to be scaled down a little bit but only really time will tell. So as far as units, Mantis really is the new big uh, Sergeant Johnson unit that we're getting. So really cool here. Essentially just a mech. Um, pretty good uh, against everything. A little bit slight weakness to air, uh, but they really did a, a good comparison, I think, and compared it kind of to a slower Warthog. Um, so you, I think you'll see some, some similar capabilities. Uh, and rolling right along into that you get the veteran mantis this thing is always always going to be worth it uh, it does have the shield so you get that additional capability to survive uh, as well as just additional firepower um, when they were playing with them you could definitely tell the difference from the two uh, this one fires rockets a little bit more faster and definitely uh, its main gun is quite a bit better um, additionally we get kind of the upgraded version of the mech uh, with the colossus um, at 130 energy, this thing is a huge, it's a beast, it's absolutely awesome to see on the battlefield. Pretty good overall around everything, obviously going to be really strong against vehicles. We also do get the stomp ability, um, so very similar, I would, I would argue probably very similar to uh, kind of like the reaver jump that we get. And then Sergeant Johnson, the big bad Sergeant Johnson, the piece of resistance for the blitz cards and the last one that we're seeing. Um, 220 energy just has shield as the ability which is pretty interesting um, he also has his repair beacon for his Y ability uh, which I do think is going to be one of the better Y abilities that we see um, drops an AOE healing uh, which heals multiple units at, at a time and really has quite a bit of range as well as uh, a pretty good timer on it to be really honest so it's going to be really interesting to see uh, how Sergeant Johnson and his card uh, works in the grand scheme of things. So those are your Blitz cards. That's what we're getting with the next DLC drop with Sergeant Johnson. Super excited for it. I, I really do. It's always nice to get new fresh units in the game, new things to see, uh, and new abilities to test out and uh, you know to try out different strategies with. 
So with them playing Blitz Firefight and again getting to see some of these things in action in the stream, there are a few cards that I want to pick out, uh, more so also a few abilities that I want to pick out and just talk about specifically. Bunker Drop honestly being one of them. Um, I talk about in the multiplayer video that again, if you haven't checked it out, please go do um, how Sergeant Johnson definitely feels like more of a defensive player. Uh, I think the bunker drop uh, power that we get, as well as the siege turret drop, um, and really the mech overdrive, which provides invulnerability to his mech units, um, to me, just again, it, it's really pushing forward that idea of a more defensive setup. The bunker drop, I was extremely, extremely um, surprised with, I think, would be one of my initial reactions. Um, An initial impression was really awesome uh, as far as the 40 energy uh, that you're getting. Again, it has three shield, the bunker has a ton of health, um, took quite a while to take down, and the fact that you could throw four infantry units in, it's essentially acting like a huge shield for them. Um, and the fact that you could then heal it, you can drop it anywhere, uh, I think that in combination with a Kodiak, in combination with the ability to drop in a Siege turret, in combination with Sergeant Johnson, uh, his hero card, and the fact that he has a AoE healing ability, um, all just scream again to me for point defense and blitz. I think the capability to drop a bunker up uh, and essentially kind of block off your ridges or block off entrance points uh, to your points specifically so that units have to fight through that bunker, fight through the units that are in there just to get to the point, um, obviously minus Aryans because they just can fly over it, but um, all those things and then the additional healing capability uh, and his mechs again being generally what, what seem to be, and again we'll test all this stuff out when the DLC does drop, but generally seem to be very well balanced units. Um, again, a little bit weaker to air, which is really okay because you partner one of those up, uh, you know, with a Wolverine, and it seems like you have a pretty good duo uh, and combo just sitting there. You throw a Nightingale above that, you throw a bunker down in front with a couple of infantry units in it, or some snipers, honestly. Um, and I think Sergeant Johnson can be one of those leaders that kind of changes up the, the meta a little bit. I haven't been seeing uh, recently playing quite as much of like the infantry or small unit spam. Um, we do still definitely get um, kind of a locust heavy meta. So I think that's the one area where the bunker will obviously f be at a little bit of a disadvantage to be honest. I also think Kinsano has maybe a little bit more of a leg up I guess if you will um, when it comes to being able to take down structure so being able to take down uh, the siege turret that you can drop and then being able to take out the bunker uh, are going to be big considerations uh, but I do definitely think Sergeant Johnson and the fact that you can have him and help, have him really help you set up on points for point defense and on ridges for the ridge defense especially OP ridge between B and C, the fact that you can really lock that down and now really throw some additional firepower and some really good additional defensive structures, um, honestly, I think is going to be one of the more interesting leaders to use and really has a good place in both twos and threes. He's definitely still viable in ones. I, I won't discount him at all uh, because he has all the regular tools that really any UNSC leader does. Uh, again, I do like his leader powers, EMP Mac Blast. Even if the, the damage is a little bit less, which I, I really do expect it to be compared to a, the standard Mac Blast, the additional ability is going to be awesome. The brief stun, that lets you just roll your units in, or if you're in a big fight, you drop that thing on a point, um, those couple extra seconds of stun are just going to give you that advantage. Uh, and Mac Blast, honestly, in, in my opinion, was one of my more favorite powers, uh, just because it is pretty simultaneously. It's a pretty short flash to bang, if you will, of when you call it in, and when the targeting circle comes up, it's pretty hard to get out of. Uh, so again, having that stun ability added on, I think is going to be really nice. Um, overall, I, as you guys can tell, I'm super excited for this. Anytime we get any new DLC, any new leaders, new units, and new powers, uh, it's always fun to be able to go in, test them out. But I definitely think Again, Sergeant Johnson, a little bit more on the defensive side, but if you can get that initial energy advantage and you can really push to hold OP Ridge 
uh, or even the, the opposite ridge lines over A and behind C, um, I think you can get some great defense set up, uh, especially in a twos and a, definitely in a threes match. Having one person play uh, as Sergeant Johnson, I think, will really help round out a team. Um, so if you have somebody kind of focus on the energy grab, you have somebody focus kind of on the early point, uh, you know, infiltration and fights on the points, and then you can, you know, buy that Sergeant Johnson player a little bit of time to build up some energy, build up some infantry units to garrison in when a bunker is called in, um, are all going to be great things. The fact that the bunkers don't go away is also really awesome. Um, so, uh, again, I, I just think he's going to be a really cool leader. Super excited to get our hands on it. Super excited to get uh, and try out his, his hero unit, too. Uh, I think uh, the speed of it, the fact that he only has the shield is the only kind of drawback that I saw. Uh, but, again, I think his hero, uh, you know, Y ability for his little, uh, they called it the disco ball healing effect. Uh, I think that's going to be awesome, especially in a big fight. Again, if you're kind of contesting for those points or somebody's pushing a large army uh, onto your point and you have him in the midst of the fight, uh, I think he's going to be absolutely critical to keeping your units alive. Um, it always seems like, obviously, that the player that can keep their, un their units alive, especially their higher energy costing units, typically has a little bit better of an advantage, uh, especially in the long run, and I think he's going to be able to make uh, and extend that for you. 220 energy is pretty comparable um, and I think they're setting it up pretty good. So again super interested to see what you guys think. I definitely think he also has some great capability in firefight too. So if you're definitely uh, one of those people that likes to jump into some co-op firefight or solo firefight, I think Kodiaks, Siege Turrets, and the Bunkers are all going to be great great additions uh, to any Blitz firefight deck. So please as always, let me know down in the comments what you guys are thinking. If you have any additional strategies that you've kind of been mulling over now that you've uh, seen the release. If you haven't seen any of the release stream, uh, I essentially did a breakdown video just the other day. Everybody that did watch it, thank you so very much for the support. It means a ton to me and Sloth. Um, and we're really looking forward to bringing you a bunch more content. As soon as the DLC drops, uh, again, the last word we got was Monday, so hopefully it's coming then. If not, they did say early next week, uh, so we'll keep our fingers crossed for Monday. But as soon as that does drop, we're going to be doing a live stream. And as always, if you're familiar with the channel, you know we're going to be doing a ton of stuff. We're going to be doing multiplayer. We'll be doing some blitz. We'll cover all the units. We'll cover all the cards. We'll cover a hero unit breakdown. We'll update our spreadsheet, all the stuff that we've done uh, for every other leader. So a ton of content coming out next week. Look forward to you guys hanging out with us, uh, checking in with us each day for more content. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe. It helps us out. If you enjoyed this one, smash that like button for us. Um, again, just another way to, to let us know that you're enjoying the content. And again, comment down below. We really like, uh, we really do enjoy chatting with you guys. And speaking of that, make sure join the Xbox Average Gamer Guys Club. It's free. Everybody joins. We accept everybody, and it's a great place to find some people that. Uh, honestly can play Halo Wars or Halo 5 uh, or a bunch of other Xbox games. Additionally, we've got our Twitter feed down below in the comments, uh, so if that's a platform you're on, make sure to uh, hit us up, follow us on there, uh, because again, as soon as we get the DLC, uh, I'll be sending a note out on all the platforms that we can to let you guys know it's live, uh, and then that'll be just be another way that you can get uh, notifications from us whenever we upload new videos. So I've been Doc with Average Gamer, guys. Again, thank you guys so very much. The support has been overwhelming. It has been super awesome. We really do appreciate it, and we really look forward to checking you in the next one. Thanks for watching.